on. A lot of you may know that Pastor and his uh, wife was out of town, Sister Kim, for a few days. And uh, this past weekend, we had gone up to my son's to see my gr our granddaughter graduate high school. And so Saturday afternoon, we were on our way back, and he said, hope you enjoying your family time. And he said, will you teach for me Wednesday night? We're going to have family time. Now, how can you say no to that? But anyway, I'm glad you're here tonight, and um, I want us to start off with prayer. Uh, I went to make some hospital calls today, and Brother Piper, Brother Piper really needs a miracle. Um, he just needs a miracle, so we need to lift him up, lift up his little sweet wife, and uh, she's believing whatever God's will is for his life. He's in Providence. He's in um, ICU. Mm -hmm. And then um, Terry Dixon went to visit with him today, and um, he needs prayer. Rhonda Murray is out of the hospital where she stayed for several days. And uh, my husband's brother, Jeff, had surgery today. He's in a lot of pain, but he's doing well, and they would like for us to pray for them. So if you have a need, we'll take just a few minutes and take prayer requests. Okay, Greg. Let's remember her and also Alice Labitt. She's back in Texas, so if you want to pray for her. Brother Collier. Yes, Joey's had a lot of problems. He's had both knees operated on. I think he told me the other day when I went to see him, he's had 18 surgeries. Okay, little Bryce, he's had, I mean, he needs a miracle in his little body. I saw another hand. Lisa? Yes, this is Cindy Noble's mom. Okay, anyone else before we pray? Okay, Susie? Amen. Tawana. Okay. All right. Is that everyone? How many of you know or how many of you has God ever given you a miracle? Today when I went to see Brother Piper, um, he was not aware that I was even there. And I went in the waiting room, and Sister Piper was in there, and some more people were in there. And she introduced me, and she said, this lady should have died. And she said something to the effect she hoped I didn't mind. I said, I don't mind at all. I am a miracle, and I know that. It's been 12 years. And she, Sister Piper said, uh, God healed her, raised her from the dead, and now she goes to the hospital praying for people. Um, regardless, 
regardless of my situation, man, I trust God. I trust him. I know that he's the great God, Jehovah. I know that he still heals. He still delivers. He still sets free. I believe that he can do anything. And as we pray tonight, I want us to believe for that. Okay, let's pray. Father, Lord, I already feel you. And I thank you, Holy Spirit. I thank you. Lord, I thank you that I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you can do all things. There's nothing too hard for you. Every unspoken request, every person that has cancer, Every person that needs a miracle, like Brother Piper and little Bryce, those that are suffering with cancer, that the doctors say four months, but God, only you know. You can do all things. For Joey Turner, Lord, I can't remember all these needs. Mark, Alice Labitt, all of them, Father, they've been spoken. You have heard. And God, I pray tonight that you would touch. Lord, I ask that you, every person in here tonight, whatever their situation may be, whatever they may be going through, I pray, God, that you reach down and that you touch them. Lord, I give you praise for all things in Christ's name. And, Lord, as we receive our offering tonight, I pray, God, that you would bless it. I pray, God, that you would touch those that can give. And there may be some that cannot give, but, God, you see their heart. And you know that they would give if they could. And I pray that you bless them. Help us tonight, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. While they're taking up the offering, if you will, go with me to 1 Kings chapter 17. 1 Kings chapter 17, if you have your Bibles or... Some of you um, read with your phone, is ever how. First Kings chapter 17. We're going to be reading the first 16 verses. I'm going to read them all, and then I will go back. And take them word for word. When we were on our way back Saturday afternoon, our oldest son Bill and his daughter um, Sarah was with us. And after I received the text from Pastor, I was in the back seat with Sarah and she was asleep. And so I just closed my eyes and I said, okay, Lord, I need you to give me something. Because the next few days, tomorrow Sunday and that's a busy day and so forth and so on. And the Lord began to speak this to me, and I began to take note. And I thought, as he said, 1 Kings chapter 17, I thought immediately, well, Lord, everyone in there probably can tell this story. But how many of you know the word of God never gets old? No matter how many times you read it, no matter how many times you study it, I love 1 Kings chapter 16. I mean, 17. So I, let's read these, and you follow along with me, and then we will, we will go and, and do them one by one. And it said, Elijah the Tishbite, who was an inhabitant of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be any dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. I want you to notice that. But according to my word. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself behind the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord, for he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up, 
because there had been no rain in the land. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Sidon, Sidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thy hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God, God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruse. And behold, I am gathering two sticks, that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after for thee and for thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail, until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And, and she and he and her house did eat many days. Verse 16. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. Father, tonight, Lord, I ask for your anointing. Lord, I can't do this without you because I'm nothing without you. But, Lord, I can do this because you give me the strength. Lord, I can do this because your word is so anointed and it won't return void and it will rest upon the hearts and the ears that will receive it. It's not because it is me, but it's because of your word. So, Lord, I pray tonight at every individual that you would touch them. Let them take something home tonight of the word, that it will penetrate their hearts because your word is so sharp and so powerful. And, God, I praise you tonight that you're going to touch us in a mighty way. Father, I give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. As we read these scriptures... I want us to think, and this was my prayer for us tonight, that God will speak to every one of us in here, regardless of our age or who we are, where we came from, what walk of life we're from, what we've done previously in life um, till today. I want us to just expound on these words. And in verse 1, when Elijah was a powerful prophet in the northern kingdom. His name means the Lord is God or Yahweh is God. His name it means, and I thought, I read it again, I got another Bible translation, and when it says the Lord is God, what a powerful name. Every one of us in here, our name means something. But can you imagine having the name that means the Lord is God. Elijah was a messenger of God. When God speaks, something will happen, and we can take God at his word. That's verse 1. You see, for three and a half years, God withheld the rain. But in verse 2, where God said, where the word of the Lord came to Elijah and told him, he said, God gave him instructions. Verse 3, he said, go away from here. Turn eastward. Hide yourself behind the, by the brook Cherith, which is east of Jordan. Now, as I begin to unfold this, and as I begin early this morning to study this, and, and, and I thought, Lord, I want new revelation on this. And, you know, God begins to speak, and he begins to show us things differently or in another way, perhaps. Then in verse 3, he told him, he said, go eastward. And then in verse 4, he said, God said, I've got 
things set in order for you, Elisha. Meaning, God had a brook for him to drink water from, and he had commanded the ravens to feed him right there. This is just a little side note that I was thinking on this morning. You may feel like you're in a drought, spiritually speaking. You may feel like your brook has dried up. Maybe you feel like I haven't felt the presence of God for so long. Well, I want to tell you something tonight. My God is the spiritual moving God. It doesn't matter what it seems like. What it does matter is if you'll just reach out and touch him. There's been plenty of times I've had to say and I've had to pray, God, I feel like my brook has dried up like Elijah felt. But I said, God, you said those that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. So tonight I'm believing and trusting God. For those of you in here tonight, you feel like your brook's dried up. You feel like there's no way out. I come by to tell us tonight, and I'm teaching, I know, but I come by to tell us tonight, God's going to give you something that you've been praying for. God's going to give you something you've been longing for. God's going to speak into your spirit, and you're going to feel that refreshing of the Holy Ghost as it sweeps over your very inner being tonight. I speak to that individual tonight that they're wondering, God, where are you? But I hear the voice of, the, of God saying, Behold, I'm standing at your door. I'm standing at your heart. You don't have to wonder any longer. You're not in the wilderness any longer. But I come by to tell you tonight that the presence of the Almighty God is, my Lord, he's going to flow on us tonight. My Lord, I feel this, Pastor Ricky. Woo. It's all right, Pat. It's all right. He knows. He knows you feel like your brook's all dried up. He knows that you feel like, Lord, how much more? It's okay. Been there, done that. But I serve a big God. I serve a big God. Verse 5. Elijah did according to what God told him to do. I want you to think about that. Obedience is the key. Folks, we got to obey God. I, I mean, we got to obey God. Deuteronomy 11, verse 27. And this is in the New Living Translation. If y'all would have saw my dining room table this morning, because I don't have a desk because I don't have anywhere to put it, so I put everything there. But I was sitting there with all those Bibles and different translations. And this one just really, it, it, it just got a hold of me. But it says, you will be blessed if you obey the commands of the Lord your God that I'm giving you today. Now, I have to be perfectly honest. Sometimes obeying God, I'll just say for me, is may not be the easiest thing there is. Sometimes when God speaks, one of our former pastors used to say, I used to pray, God, now if this is you, let ten elephants come right down in front of me. <laughs> that's, man, that's carried it a long way, but you know what? Sometimes when God speaks to us, when he speaks to us, God knows what he's doing, and he, know, he knows what we can do, when we can do it. But, but Elijah did according to the word of God. He obeyed the word of God. In verse 6, it talks about, And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, bread and, fle and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. Verse 6, God took care of Elijah because he was obedient. Philippians 4.19 says, and we probably all can quote this, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. You have a need tonight? Yes, some of you, some of us in here, yes, we do. But God can supply that need. But he wants us 
to be obedient. The ravens brought Elijah bread and flesh in the morning and in the evening, and he drank from the brook. Is that not taking care of an individual? Yes. When God tells us to do something, he's going to take care of it. And then verse 7, it talks about, and after a while, the brook dried up. Because why? Because there had been no rain. Because God said there wasn't, and there wasn't. But let me ask you a question. Did God leave him in that situation? No. He didn't leave him in that situation. Is God going to leave us in the situation that we're going through? I don't think so. Hmm? Not if we're obedient. He is not. God won't leave us in any situation, but he will make a way where there seems to be no way. He had prepared. And what did Elijah have to do? Believe God. Y'all can't make a comment. Just don't ask me a question. (laughs) Anybody? That's good. God had had made the way. You see, most of you know that, let's see, 15 months ago, 14 months ago, we got... News that my husband lost his job after 28 years. There went his job. He couldn't work again. There went our insurance. There went this. There went that. And here's me. Okay, God. (laughs) Okay, God. Now, God, we've paid our tithes. We've given offerings. We've been faithful. You see, God already knew what was going to take place. He already knew it. He knew he was going to lose his job. He didn't take God by surprise, but when his boss called him in and said, you've lost your job, whew, it took us by surprise. So the things that you, and that's not a pity party. Let me tell you, God has been faithful. God has been faithful. Had I not or had we not, All these years, been faithful to God, tithing, giving in our offering, coming to church. This is me. I I, I don't feel like I could have said, okay, God, we've done this, this, and this. But you see, God already had it planned out. In those days that I was wondering, okay, God, what what we're going to do, it was like this. God said, I've already made a way for you. But you got to what? Believe. And you got to what? Trust. You got to believe. You got to trust. Because God will make a way. Verse verse 8. And the word of the Lord came to him. It came to him again. He said, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Sidon, and dwell there, because I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee, to take care of you. Now, you stop and think about this for just a moment. Here's a widow woman, and God has prepared her for Elijah. I'm going to tell you something. Don't that tell you how big God is? That God will make a way when there seems to be no way? In verse 9, huh, ma'am? She had a need. We're going to get there. No, that's okay. No, you go ahead. She had a need too. But how many know God knew she had a need? And how many of you know, we're not going to get ahead of ourselves. Verse 9, God directed Elijah to go to a pagan territory inhibited by Baal worshipers. And there was the widow lady. There she was. And she was going to take care of him. Now, I don't know about you, I love this story, but I like to visualize this in my mind. And in verse 10, so he arose. There, what's that word again? Obedience. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. 
And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. Now here's that word, and here's what I want us, what are the words I want us to zero in on tonight? It's the word obedience. He got up, and he went exactly where God told him to go. You know, sometimes we need to go where God tells us to go, but sometimes we need to stay where he says stay. I had someone call me a couple of weeks ago. And uh, very seldom I talk to this individual. They don't even live here. And, uh, and he said, Sister Baker, I thought, good Lord, Sister Baker. I said, yes. He said, this is so-and-so. I said, yes. And he paid me a compliment. He said, I know you're a praying woman. And he said, I've got a need, and I want you to pray about it. I said, okay. And I began to pray right then for him, over the phone. Began to pray in the Holy Ghost for him. Because I knew that God knew what his answer was. He sent me a text last week. Sister Baker, God gave me my answer. You know, sometimes we just have to get before God and be obedient to, the, to, to God. So here was this lady, and I like to visualize her out there just picking up those sticks, gathering those sticks. And Elijah asked him for that and a cup of water. And as verse 11, then he asked her for a piece of bread. If it was you, what would you think? If you thought that you was gathering up for the last meal for you and your son. Anybody? Well, how, how do you think you would feel? Just think about it for a second. Somebody said something about acting like. Anybody? How would you feel if you was out there gathering up sticks to make a meal for just you and your son? And then y'all were going to die. I'm <laughs> stressed out. What, Todd? No, I mean, you know, think about that. that. There's nothing wrong with that answer. There's nothing wrong with that answer at all. Because you know what? Some of us might have said that. Might have, some of us might have looked at him and said, who do you think you are? <laughs> That's right. I've got my own problems. You, you go do something. But she wasn't like that. Why? Because God, ma'am, God prepared her. And I'm going to tell you, when my husband lost his job, God didn't prepare her up. That was a, <laughs> that was a shocker. <laughs> I can tell you. But he has shown himself faithful. That's, that's the key. He has shown himself very, very faithful. In verse 12, and she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and then a little oil and a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. Mm. A scripture that we all quote so often, and sometimes we, we just get so immune to scriptures, but Jeremiah 29 and 11. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. God has our future in the palm of his hand. He knows everything about us. Everything. He knew God had a plan for Elijah. God had a plan for the widow woman. God has a plan for you. When everything seems like it's going in the opposite direction, God turns it around for the good. I was looking over here. This won't embarrass her, but I was looking over here at my niece. And um, for years and years, she was one of the most faithful, faithful Christians that I had ever been around. I had seen her fast 
and I had for days on end to stay. She would go up any time. And I, at that time, I was doing a ladies' prayer meeting. She was she was one of my most faithful faithful members. And uh, due to some situations that I really don't even know all about, but she got out of church. She's always been a sanctuary sleeper. She's always been. I, she used to work at Walmart, and I'd go in there just to see her. Well, see her. But several weeks ago, God got a hold of her. And she started coming back to church. And uh, she was leaving one Sunday morning. And I didn't even know who Teresa was talking about. And Teresa looked at me, and she said, she said, Anna, I want to go to Lisa so bad, but I don't want to scare her off. And I thought, well, I don't know who Lisa is, but go to her. <laughs> I didn't know who she was talking about. I didn't even know she was here. And Lisa uh, and Teresa, ter- Lisa was going out the back door. Teresa, Karen Hamilton, and Marshall Lucan all got to her before she could open up that back door. And they led her in the sinner's prayer. You see, God's always had his hand on her. He's always had his hand on her. He had an aunt that loved her more than anything. And I told the devil, I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up on my nephew. They're coming back. You see, God has our future. He knows everything about us. Even when we, even when we sometimes are not obedient, God says, I know the future. You're going to do it. And I would say, oh, no, God, not me. No, God, I, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that. God, I'll clean toilets. I'll vacuum. I'll do. I'll do ladies' prayer meeting. I, I'll, I'll do anything you want me to, God. But I'm not going to preach your word. So don't ask me to do that anymore. Until that final day, when God said, "If you don't, I'll take my power from you. I'll take my anointing from you." I said, "God, I'll do anything you want me to do. Don't ever take your spirit from me. Don't ever take your anointing from me, God." Don't ever do it. Because you see, Sister Patty had a plan for me. I didn't see that plan. I didn't like that plan. And I knew my husband. I thought, God, you know my husband ain't going to want no woman preacher. Not knowing that years before I even knew him, years before I even knew him, he would pass this house on Moffat Road where a truck driver was. And then that man's wife was a preacher. And he said, I'd pass by there and I'd think, you know what? That must be pretty awesome to have a woman, a wife, as a preacher. See, God had, a, God knew that Bill didn't have a problem with it. Does some people, some men, yeah, say they do. But Bill didn't, and he, you know, here we are. But God said, I know the future that I have for you. And then in verse 13, And Elijah said unto her, Fear not. And you know God. Is not God does not give us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. If, you, if you're in here tonight and you, you're battling with fear, let go. God's not give it to you. He's not give it to you. You say, well, Sister Anna, you don't ever become fearful uh, sometimes. And, and I have to just begin to resist it, that. The Bible says to resist the devil and he'll flee from you. I have to resist that. And I said, no. Uh, sometimes I want to worry about something. And I say, oh, no, you can't worry. God don't want me to worry. What good is it going to change? It doesn't change anything. Get you all in a tizzy and upset and crying and wondering what's going on. Oh, no, God doesn't want us to fear. He doesn't want us to worry. And then verse 13, and Elijah said unto her, I read that, fear not. Whew, somebody, don't fear. And then verse 14, for thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. When you're wondering, And if you're thinking about, God, what am I going to do? 
just remember, God will take God will take care of you. God took care of her, everything. And then verse 15, it says, She went and did, and I love that. She went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and her son did eat many days. Obedience. The other Sunday, when we had the guest speaker, Brother Harold Woodson, I know that we can't buy salvation. We can't buy these things because it's already been purchased for us. And I know the, the scripture says, Give, he shall, and he shall give it unto you. Press down, shaken together, running over, shall men give unto you. Well, that Sunday night, and it wasn't me, <laughs> there was an individual in our service. And uh, because they talked to me later on about it that night. They said they had just, just a little bit of money. Just a little bit of money, not much. And they, they felt the Spirit of the Lord saying, give it all. Humans, we're human. And they were thinking, I can't give this little bit. And really, this little bit is all I've got. And I don't have, this is all I've got. The Lord kept saying, obey me. Obey me, obey me, give. And that person took that little bit that he thought. Remember how the lady thought? He took that little bit in obedience to God. He, they said they walked down and they just put that little bit in with all that money. You know, if God speaks to you to give 10000 you better give it. If God speaks to you to give 5000 you better give it. If God tells you to give a dollar, you better give it. And if God tells you to give everything you've got, and it may not be much, and you don't know where the, it's the other's coming from, you better be obedient. So that individual said they went and put it down there and they went back to their seats. And before they got out of the church and before they got into their vehicle, the Lord had already given it back to them like 10 times over. Somebody ought to get happy in here. If that was you, give all you had and it wasn't much. And you've got about 10 times that amount? My Lord. If it wouldn't been me, I'd been shouting. Oh, yeah, thank you, Lord. That was for me. So what did I say that? Because Second Chronicles 20 and 20. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe his prophets. So shall you prosper. Now that, that's in the Bible. There was a prophecy given over me 21 years ago by two preachers. Some of you heard me say it. I won't even say what it was anymore. Two of them. An evangelist and a pastor. They, they told me exactly what God was going to do for me. Man, whoo, yeah, I received it. I mean, I received it. It's been 21 years ago. I received it. I still remind God of it today. I said, God, I believe those two men of God because they said they were of God, and I knew one of them. And I said, God, I believe, and it's been 21 years, and I'm still believing, and God, it can happen today. I hadn't quit believing. I believe it's going to happen. I, I just believe it. Why? Because I believe the prophets, and he said we shall be established. Hebrews 11 and 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews 11 and 6, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You see, the widow lady had to have faith 
to believe that if she did that, that God was going to reward her. Now, there's been times I've given, and I didn't know what God was going to do, but God's always proven faithful to me. You see, because of the widow's faith in God, and because she done what the prophet Elijah said, she was blessed for many days. Why? Because God awarded her, rewarded her, her act of faith. And in verse 16, there was always enough meal and oil, just as God had promised through the prophet Elijah. Always. You see, God, and I, this morning I just kept sitting there and I kept writing and I kept thinking and I kept praying. And for some of you, you may not understand, but sometimes, it's a, it's a real big thing for me to be able to even do this. But I said, God, if I can touch one person in that service tonight, that they can release whatever is in your hand. We've got a few minutes. And I wasn't going to do this, but you know what? Obedience. I talk about it, and then I, then I fought God with it. I don't know why. I want you to stand up, all of this, every one of y'all, everybody. I want you to, <clears throat> I want you to just, I, I want to speak very, very, very serious. Not that you haven't been, but I, I, I want our minds clear. I want our minds clear. Because I, I've been praying today. That's not bragging. I've heard some people say, I've been 